Well, Jeannie, let's go back okay. to probably one of your first, I mean, major um, business, I'm going to say deals. Okay. You actually ran a tennis team. Mm -hmm. Let me get the name of it correctly. The Los Angeles Strings. Yes. You were 19 years old. Yeah, you know, um, my dad bought the forum, the Lakers and the Kings. I was, you know, 17, 18 years old. And, um, you know, when you own an arena like the forum and you have a hockey team and a basketball team, that takes up about 100 nights a year. <laughs> yeah. And so, with, you know, what you try to do is fill up the other 250 nights. And so my dad knew that I loved sports and he knew that I knew tennis and so he bought a team and he named me general manager and if I would have known what I didn't know I would have been scared but the fact that he had faith in me to do it I was willing to just throw myself into it and hey, I you were still in school right USC oh yeah like he I said oh great you know now that I have a job I'm gonna quit school and he said no <laughs> you have to stay in school you can have the job and work it during the summer it, it, it can't interfere with your schoolwork or you just stay in school you can't have the job so I had to do both which was actually a really good good learning experience no, for no me. question about it somebody at, at, at your age at that time to be able to do both I mean especially something like that it's mm -hmm. not like okay I'm gonna go to fat burger and work <laughs> and go to school at the same time that was pretty difficult but that was obviously you think setting you up for what you're gonna be doing later. yes okay. absolutely tell me in fact the Great Western Forum um, how was that experience at the tennis club? How did that prepare you for that? Um, you president? You know, um, I think that it made me fearless. It made me um, get comfortable with um, maybe failing. You know, like uh -huh. in other words, um, you learn to make decisions and you, you try to eliminate all the um, risk involved mm -hmm. and hopefully you come out the right way, um, but sometimes you don't, and you have to accept and learn from awesome. every failing that you have in order to continue on your path. Okay, so the strings um, actually set you up for the Great Western Forum. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense too when you talk about the learning curve, you do something in a smaller venue that sets you up for something big. And let's talk about the uh, coup de grace. 1999, you were executive VP of the business operations for the Lakers. Yeah. What was the most difficult part in you going from the strings to the Great Western Forum to becoming the executive, the executive VP of the Lakers? You know, the great thing is that I had a boss, my dad, who believed in me. And so what he continued to do was challenge me and he saw that I was willing to accept challenges, that I was resilient um, even in uh, difficulties. And so he had the confidence to name me into that position. It was proving myself to everybody, uh, especially um, you know, the old guard at the NBA, at the league office, uh, mm. the, the other uh, you know, teams around the league and uh, you know, uh, showing that I did deserve a seat at the table. You know, I, I love hearing you talking about your dad. He was larger than life. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of young men at the time that he mentored. And I, I can hear, in fact, Urban saying the same thing mm -hmm. about confidence, building confidence, mm -hmm. um, having that belief that, yes, you can do this and I have great faith in you. And when you talk about the old guard being a woman mm -hmm. at that particular time, Let's talk about that for a minute, because I know that couldn't that couldn't have been easy. How were you received? Um, you know, I you know talk about um, you know uh, you know when you're one of the few women in a room, and maybe the only woman in a room in a in a conference room, a, a business meeting, um, you know you get the coffee orders, you get the like donuts, you know, it's just the natural thing to, you know, for the everybody to turn to you to, to you know, kind of act as the, the coordinator of tea parties. And, um, you know, that's where you have to um, 
you know, assert yourself and, and realize that you deserve a seat at the table and, and that especially this business, which is so competitive, mm -hmm. that everybody's looking for that competitive advantage. And if they can diminish you and you agree to take it, then they've won. And so you have to have confidence in yourself and, and realize that you belong there and you can't let other people discount you. Because whether you're a woman, whether you're new to the, the business, everybody's out to look for an edge right. to intimidate you. To and it, Right, and if you believe that being a woman you know, makes you lesser than, then you are because hmm. it's, it, it's, I can sit here and tell you being a woman in this business doesn't diminish you at all. Now let me ask you, we're talking about when, when you were first named. Do you think things are different now? You gotta be received differently now. Um, you know, I think, it, you know, it's it, in our business, you're, every year you're judged by your wins and losses. Okay. So it's, it, you know, you're always proving yourself. Um, but, you know, I think that, um, you know, I, I would hold my track record mm -hmm. comparable to anybody in, in a similar position to me in any sports league. And I would think that I have accomplished a great deal. And you know what, going by just being not necessarily judged, but if it's judged by wins and losses, then that's men too. That's just across absolutely, the board. Absolutely, absolutely. Is it kind of better to be judged that way in a way than just because I'm female, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's certainly, um, it's, it's more tangible, wins and losses. Um, I think every team, uh, every market deals with its own uh, certain challenges and certainly being in a big market and, and having the kind of competition that we do here. Um, you know, it, 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 it's tough to be successful, not to get lost um, with all the other options that fans have mm -hmm. in LA. And, uh, you know, we, we continue to do what Laker, the Laker brand has been created to bring, which is um, an emphasis on winning, um, bringing together community, um, uniting Los Angeles under a purple and gold flag. Those are all things that were important to Dr. Buss and that I continue in, in that role going forward. You know, I love you said Dr. Buss. Is it something now to be recognized as Jeannie Buss, not Dr. Buss's daughter? I'm so proud to be his daughter. And, and I, you know, I was so fortunate to have him as my mentor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm proud to follow in his footsteps. Well, I'm sure he's proud of you too. Thank you. <laughs> During some of those times, those meetings, just the, the you know, the tra tra trajectory of being the boss, is there something that stood out more than anything else that you kind of like, okay, I'm gonna push that away? Um, way beyond that? You know, I, I think that, um, you know, you, you can't, um, you can't let your emotions dictate your decision process. And I think now in, in the world of social media, it's, it's more difficult to kind of separate um, the, the fans from the fanatics, that you have you know, people that uh, you know, just want to be critical and you know, hate on you. A lot of times, if you, if you look to see what this account really is about, they're Boston Celtics fans. So <laughs> of course they're not gonna be happy with decisions that we do and that they're gonna, you know, um, voice. yeah, voice all their displeasure with, with anything Lakers. But, you know, by and large, you, ha you have to, you know, know what your plan is, be consistent when things, um, you know, seem like, seem rocky or, there's a lot of uh, up and down, upheaval. You gotta keep both feet on the ground and um, you know, con continue to, to stick with your plan and not um, you know, go back and forth and, and uh, doubt uh, the decisions 
that you've made and and decide to stick with them but you know all all the while um, you know um, being open to tweaking any plan that you did have always taking in information always processing that information and if you have to pivot and 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 go a, another course that you're willing to take that um, course as well. Jeannie, you seem like the kind of person that you make decisions, you think about what you do before you make a decision. I'm gonna ask you about um, the Playboy. <laughs> yes. We were talking about your, your rise to power mm -hmm. and you do the Playboy mm -hmm. um, spread. What, what was the decision behind you doing that? Because nobody made you do it. No, that was a decision that I made and it was a personal decision, mm -hmm. you know, and I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. But I was, you know, 32 years old. Um, you know, I, it was something that was important to me and that I had hesitated about uh, making that choice because of what other people thought. Mm -hmm. And I, I, at that time, age I realized that you know I'm living this life to you know to do the things that I want to do and the, and no matter what I do there's going to be people who don't approve of me mm -hmm. so I need to make myself happy and you know it was a personal goal of mine and I accomplished it and like I said um, it's not for everybody but um, you know, I own it. I'm proud of it. I don't know if I'd do it today again, but at that at that space and time, it, it it was the right decision for me. Did that make you even more confident? Um, it what it did was it made me realize that a lot of the um, hangups uh, or judgments that I had were those I gave myself, and so they kind of melted away, like. Mm -hmm you know, accept who you are and, and, you know, and, and what's important to you and everything else falls into place. A lot of things that a lot of women have uh, thoughts about, mm -hmm. you know, about how they look, how, they, you know, especially, let's face it, you know, when we get a, get a certain age and 30 mm -hmm. certainly is not old by any means, mm -hmm. but I think you know where I'm coming from with that. Yes, you, yeah. You've gone to school, you graduated from college. Yeah. You know, you're starting to run a business, and for you, a very important business. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, okay, what about the, what about the rest of me? Right. Is that something that's changing? Yeah. And you know, I I was um, had gone through a divorce as well, ah, and so right. it was it really was about you know, just kind of embracing who I was and and where I was going to go from there, and you know, and that and that led me down a path where I I found. Um, you know, uh, a relationship that was very important to me mm. in um, falling in love with Phil Jackson, uh -huh. who was the coach of the Lakers, and, you know, having a 15-year relationship with him. Yeah, we all, we all remember that. <laughs> um, I was in Chicago just uh, right before he left with Michael Jordan, <laughs> and he took them to so many championships. Yeah. So. Um, I'm just, I, it was a love affair that I think a lot of people enjoy, especially mm -hmm. us Lakers fans and even us former Bulls, Bulls fans. <laughs> that was really uh, something special. Yeah. So I, I love how you're, you're you. talking about that, um, yeah. you know, about the reason you did it and like just life's goals and what women, we as women, what we mm -hmm. place on ourselves, getting in and out of relationships. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I hope you don't mind. Mm -hmm. But Let's go back to the Lakers. What was the most difficult um, decision that you made concerning the Lakers? Um, you know, um, when uh, Dr. Buzz passed away uh, in 2013, over 10 years ago now, um, he left me in charge and he and I had many, many hours and hours of conversation um, where he would talk about um, how he wanted me to continue to evolve the Lakers, that, that um, you know, he, he felt that I had the experience, the, the strength to do the job, but he said, you're going to do it in a way that, you know, will continue to bring the Lakers um, success mm -hmm. and, and don't be afraid of that. Um, and 
what he said was, you know, I expect you to protect the team the and, and do the, make the hard decisions. And so um, I had to make the decision to let my brother go when he was overseeing the basketball operations. And we were, you know, year after year not making the playoffs. And that was not the brand of Laker basketball that Dr. Buss had created. And, um, you know, we, he and I just didn't see things the same way. And as I like to tell people, you know, my dad had his children, but the Lakers were his baby. And he expected me to protect the baby. So I had to do what was really hard and, um, you know, and, and pivot away from my brother. And then that's when I asked Magic Johnson to come in and oversee basketball. And because of that decision, and the stability that he brought, the respect that he brought, um, allowed uh, the top free agent um, of that year of 2018 to, to join the Lakers, LeBron James. Wow. You know what? Wow, what a story. And I'm so glad that you mentioned that. I just mm -hmm. really admire your honesty and just um, willing to talk about uh, those kinds of issues. Because for, first of all, we read so much about it. You know, when you're Jeannie Buss, and when the Buss family makes a decision regarding the Lakers, one of the most uh, well-known brands in the world, you know, and we read about the the decision mm -hmm. and your brother, and you're saying how difficult that was for you. It, it, it was, um, but, you know, it, it was a decision that I had to make, and it, it, it's lonely. And the thing that I, I found was that, um, you know, the majority of businesses in, in this country are family businesses. Mm. And I couldn't believe the amount of outreach that I received of people in family businesses who've had similar situations. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what the business is, that, you know, if, if there, there has to be, um, you know, a, a de, a one decision maker right. that is leading things in, in cohesively and if there is a, a splinter if there is a disagreement that it, it can cost the the business its success and so um, you know if I if I am the poster for a child for family businesses and the difficult decisions that you have to make and how that led to the Lakers winning championship number 17 then I would do that decision again and again and you and your brother are fine. Yeah, oh yeah, we're 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 doing great, and I and I think he understands now more than ever why I had to do what I did. Well, you are the first female owner of an NBA team to take a team to the championship. <laughs> yes. So, how did that feel? <laughs> that 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 felt great, and um, you know when my dad bought the team, um, you know back in seventy nine eighty, it was his goal to make the Lakers the best franchise in the NBA. And at that time, you know, he wasn't born in LA, but he made LA his home. Mm -hmm. And he wanted the fans of LA, who he felt were the best fans in the country, to have the best team. And that meant, you know, taking on the New York Knicks, the Boston Celtics, and, and making the West Coast, you know, the, the most important coast in uh, the NBA which he felt that there was an East Coast bias for the 76ers mm -hmm. and the, the teams back East. And, uh, you know, I, I think he's, he's done a great job and I will continue to, to, you know, fulfill that vision that he had over 40 years ago. And clearly you have, and you have actually, you've had some of the biggest names in sports under your wing, the Shaquille and of course, um, Kobe, <laughs> yes. God rest his soul, mm -hmm. and LeBron. And mm -hmm. they clearly have so much respect for you. Um, I, you know, again, I learned that from Dr. Buss, that, you know, you bring in the best people and you give them what they need to be successful. And, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, the players that have played for uh, Lakers Purple and Gold will tell you what it means to, to play for Laker fans and the love affair that this city has for their Laker team. 
and you know it the fans bring out the best of of uh, of the talent for sure but you're also being very modest Jeannie bus because you are part of what makes the Lakers the Lakers and those superstars that I mentioned they clearly respect you so I love the brand too but you know it's got to be because you have managed and you've done things right they obviously like your direction um, I you know I, I mean I'm, I'm humbled to be in, in you know in the position that I am and I think that anybody in in my position would do exactly what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> now we've talked about you being the only female in the room, um, even probably now to this day, especially um, considering your title. I'm gonna ask you a question about, that I would probably ask any woman, that I've asked myself many times. Does Jeannie Buzz have it all? <sighs> you know, I, I think that um, just like other working women, um, or even uh, mothers, it's you know you're constantly having to make choices about how you spend your time because there there's only 24 hours a day and you can't create more time. You could use it efficiently as best you can, but there's there's always going to be that feeling of, you know, I wish I would have spent more time doing this, and. Um, you know, so I think for um, for the way I, I grew up and for the boss that mentored me and put me in and made this possible for me, um, I think I, I do kind of have it all. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Women of Wrestling. Now, yeah. <laughs> that's your newest venture. Yes. Tell me about that. Why was that so important to you? Well, um, you know, one of um, my inspirations is Billie Jean King, mm. the, the, you know, uh, tennis fam female. famous tennis player, <laughs> but also, you know, a pivotal, pivotal moment in my life was um, when she, you know, when I was 11 years old, my dad sat me down in front of a TV and he turned, turned it on and it was the Billie Jean King, Bobby Riggs, Battle of the Sexes. And he said, I want you to watch this because this is going to change the world. And it, it just kind of blew my mind to see a woman competing with a man that, that you know, you'd never really seen that before. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what he was trying to say to me is that, you know, women are moving you know, into this direction where they can be on the same playing field as a man. And this was like a, a, a great reference and uh, stayed with me. So Billie Jean King, um, you know, uh, really helped uh, bring about Title IX, which is right. um, a, a lot of female athletes would know about it because it, it really opened up the doors for women to participate in sports in high school. And that's in the 70s when I was in high school. One day they, they told me that I was on the girls' golf team. And I said, I don't play golf. What are you talking about? And they said, well, because of Title IX, if we have a boys' team, we have to have a girls' team. And, and we'll, we're going to teach you how to golf. And because of Title IX, I had one of the, the greatest experiences of my high school life, which was being part of the, the girls' golf team that won the championship my senior year oh, wow. and, and, and learned a sport that I can play the rest of my life. Yeah. I've seen how Title IX has created all these great opportunities in high school and colleges for women to play all different kinds of sports. and. You know, the, the only thing that we're lacking is that um, unless you play basketball or, or a golfer or a tennis player, there's really not a lot of places to turn pro. Right. And so I wanted to create, a, a, as my own personal investment, I wanted to create opportunities for women in professional sports that, that you know, that, that had dedicated their life to competing and you know weren't done when their four years of college el eligibility were up mm -hmm. and and if they had never thought of themselves as, as wrestlers if they were a swimmer or a field hockey player 
guess what? We're going to teach you how to be a wrestler. And I've always loved wrestling um, growing up. And um, the one thing that, that uh, women never had their own platform, that women were usually the undercard or the sideshow. Yeah, exactly. And so this is the only all-female wrestling, um, professional wrestling that there is. And, um, you know, we're, we're partners with uh, Paramount Global mm -hmm. Content <laughs> Distribution, and they've given us the, the uh, ability to, to show our, our uh, programming. Uh, we have 52 uh, new shows every week, like one new show every week for 52 weeks. And uh, we're currently on KCAL in right. this market, on <laughs> KCAL Saturday nights at 11. And, um, but I, I couldn't be more proud. And, you know, uh, it's kind of like when, it, when you build it, they will come. And like, you know, women who have been, um, you know, all different sports and um, disciplines have, have come in and created these larger than life characters. And they, they get to emphasize who they are in the ring. And um, we have every type of woman represented that, um, you know, uh, you know, every, every young woman can see themselves in one of the wrestlers. And, you know, that's important to me that, that um, you know, but it is wrestling and, you know, it's basically good versus evil. We like to, to call our wrestlers superheroes. And, um, you know, and, and some of them are maybe misguided in, in you know, the approach that they take, but, um, I think the, the lesson that I want uh, young women to, to learn is that um, stand up for what you believe in. Mm -hmm. Be willing to take a stand, you know, to, to state your case. Maybe you might be right or wrong, but right, like, do but do it, have a passion. And um, I think that they'll see that in, in, in WOW Women of Wrestling. Now, do you interview them yourself? No, I, you know, I, I am a, a fan too much mm -hmm. to really separate <laughs> myself from, uh, you know, I, I like, um, you know, going to the events and, um, you know, just, you know, I, I mean, the storylines are great and, you know, and we just have these fabulous athletes and, you know. Well, I, I'm going to say this. I have uh, been fortunate enough to meet a couple of the women. Um, on a number of occasions, they do a lot of charity work. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And yeah. talking to them, they just seem so, like, like we've been talking about women having it all, um, the balance, mm -hmm. you know, it can be difficult. Some of them are mothers, but they seem to be able to, to get it done. But at the same time, they are really giving. They really want to give back to, um, you know, less fortunate uh, communities and mm -hmm. people that maybe have disabilities or what have you. So, I mean, kudos to you, kudos to the organization for, you know, finding these women. And that's why I asked if you interviewed them, because I don't know if that's part of the process, but, you know, the ones that I've met, that's, um, that's how they present themselves. Yeah, I, I mean, I think when they find out that a woman owns the company, I think that that inspires them even more. And so if that's, if, if, you know, having a, a, a female owner entices them to, you know, give wrestling mm -hmm. a try, then I'm all for it. Okay. Congratulations on your recent marriage. Thank you. You know, see how we pivot there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Being a, a executive, a woman executive, had to be difficult to date in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, I love how you talked about that wonderful relationship with you and Phil, mm -hmm. and now you're married to, I'm sure, another wonderful, wonderful guy. How do you both balance work and family? Um, well, I, I find myself, uh, you know, the stepmother of a 12-year-old son, and soon to be 13, and, um, <laughs> You know that that it, it's new to me to you know try to to make that time um, and uh, you know I, I was kind of surprised at the you know reaction to a woman over 60 getting married meaning you know that 
that uh, um, I've inspired a lot of women to not give up on romance and um, you know finding that right person. And uh, I married a comedian actor by the name of Jay Moore, mm -hmm. and uh, we you know laugh a lot and. Um, it's brought a lot of joy to my life, and uh, you know we we do the best we can. You know he has a busy schedule, mm -hmm. traveling on the road, doing stand-up comedy, and uh, you know but we we try to to make it work. Is that the, you said uh, we laugh a lot? Is is that one of the main ingredients? And I'm going to ask you this, just because of of who you are, you know your position, and finding a mate that can appreciate that, not feel intimidated, if you will, but you manage to mesh together and build a relationship. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it kind of goes hand in hand with, you know, talking about posing in Playboy and becoming vulnerable that way. And uh, a few years ago, I decided, I've always admired stand-up comedians, and I um, found out about a, a class called Pretty Funny Women. And it's, it teaches women how to do stand-up. Not that I wanted to become a stand-up comedian, but I get asked to speak a lot. And I find that using a sense of humor kind of relaxes me when I have to be in the public eye. And, you know, so uh, the class teaches anybody how to be funnier. You know, everybody's funny, but how you right. hit those, those um you know, points where you can make people laugh. And, um, I, you know, I, I felt that like stand-up comedians are the bravest people because they stand up on stage by themselves, completely vulnerable, and, and expose themselves in a way that, um, you know, can make, you know, they, it shows us where their hearts are, uh, where their feelings are, and, and sometimes help us process um, difficult um, subjects by bringing humor to them and uh, you know great you know comedians like George Carlin um, and you know Joan Rivers and so many um, that I admire so uh, you know absolutely um, you know Jay and I laugh a lot That's and wonderful. and he's an excellent comedian Oh, and does that help you look um, half your age? Can't believe that you said you're over 60. <laughs> and they have to go back to how long the first time I met you. But still, you, you look fabulous. Is that part of it? You know, how do you manage? You haven't changed one bit <laughs> since so, I first met you. You're so kind. And I'm like, when I walked in my office and saw that I got you outside of the studio, I was so excited. Oh, it's so well, good to see you. I, my, seriously, my, my pleasure. I certainly would have been here before. Don't, don't think I wouldn't have. I certainly would have. And it's just, it's just wonderful to hear you talk and to hear you share. And that's what we want our, our viewers to get, you know, with being Women's History Month, but you've been so forthright about every doggone thing. And that, that has to say a lot about um, you as an individual, as a person. It's for women, even as you grow older, look at, you know, you're yeah. so, you're you. Yeah. You're still you. Yeah. I mean, I, and, and I think that, um, you know, that has been my journey was, is about like staying true to myself yeah. and not, um, you know, letting the outside world decide who I was going to be, okay. and uh, you know, it's so you're empowering. Stuck with your principles. Yeah, yeah. I have one more question. Okay. What are you the most proud of? I'm most proud of um, being part of a family business that family is defined not just by my siblings, but a team, a city. A league that I am proud to be a part of and will continue to you know try to you know keep that level that Dr. Buss set. Okay and you do believe again you can have it all so to speak. I believe it's worth trying. That's beautiful. Oh my God. <laughs> I could talk to you for two hours. Oh, you're so sweet. Like make up for lost time. <laughs>